Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Stephanie. If you haven't been here before, my, I am the mom of eight kids ages 19 to 3. And one of the things that we really love to do with our kids is play board games. And so I wanted to share with you today a few of our favorite games for the early elementary ages. So like five, six, seven. And these are even great for some of our older kids to play with each other when an adult's not playing with them. So the first game I'm going to show you is called Tiny Park. It is by Habba. We love Habba with these yellow. Actually, you can see a shelf of yellow Habba games up there. Isn't it pretty? Um, so this is a Habba game, and this is a, you are building your own amusement park. So that is such a fun little thing for kids. And you get a little board, and you have some dice, and you roll the dice. And based on what's on the dice, you can get, sorry, everything's in little baggies. We like things all nice and neat. Um, you can pick different pieces, different rides to add to your amusement park. And it depends on which dice you roll to which type of piece you can pick. And then you put them on and you fill your little amusement park. The first person to fill their amusement park wins. So very fun little theme for kids. And they're all little kitty rides. Very colorful. Very nice pieces. And so, a game we enjoy with the kids. Fairly short. I'd say it, I don't think it says on here time. I haven't played this in a little while, but I'd say probably 20 to 30 minutes at the most to play this. Um, so, quick and easy to pull out for kids. Not, I mean, there's a lot of pieces and there's a lot of little things, like the little rides, but not a lot of fiddly pieces. And... Oh, this says 10 minutes. Hmm. Maybe it is only. Maybe it's like 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I need to play it now and find out. So, fun little game. One we enjoy playing with the kids and one that's great for them to play by themselves or with each other. So, next game. This is one of my favorites. It's called Outfox. This is by Game Right. Sorry. Kid just got back from walking the dog. You might hear all the noises from that. So this game is a cooperative. So this game is competitive. If you watch my other videos for the preschool and toddlers, you know, we really like for those younger ages to have cooperative games. But as they get older, it starts to get more fun to have some competitive games where they win or lose on their own or against each other. And so but this is a really fun whodunit type of cooperative game. And so this is so cute. You have this board where you... You are at the park. Um, hold on, is there another? Oh, no, that's it. Okay. You have this board, and you all start here, and then you have these dice, and you roll your dice, and you're either trying to get up here to look for clues, get to one of the clue spots, or you have suspects all around the board. And you, before the game starts, you pick a thief randomly without looking, and you put it in. Those all fell out. Um, you put it in your little finder here, and once you put your thief in, this is so cute. You don't look at this when you're doing it for the game. You put your thief in, and then when you get to finding a clue, you pick one of these randomly, and this one is glasses. And so you put those on, and you pull it out. If there's a little green dot here, that means that the suspect has glasses. If there's not, it means they don't have glasses. So then when you turn over a suspect card, and you go, oh, they have a monocle. They don't have glasses, so they could still be a suspect. Or, oh, they have glasses, so they're out. They can't be one of our suspects. And you keep going around looking at different clues and looking at your suspects as you turn them over and trying to figure out which suspect is your thief. And you have to do all of that before your little fox guy gets back to his hole. And he goes back based on if you don't roll the right things on the dice. He moves towards his hole. And so there's a lot of luck of what you're rolling on the dice. But there's also then some strategy of, um, should I pick more clues or do we have enough clues and need to start looking at suspects? And then the logic part of, okay, look at this clue. Now, can this suspect be one of our suspects based on this clue? And then when you think you know who did it, you can say, okay, we know. And you can pull out the card and be like, oh, we were right or wrong. <laughs> so... Fun, fun game. I, re I really, really like playing this game.
So I'm trying, I try to pick games that I enjoy playing with the kids myself. So that's something that I would be like, let's pull this out and play this because I enjoy it. And obviously the kids like it too. But I, you know, you want to have stuff that you enjoy playing. Okay, next one is Catan Jr. Catan Jr., depending on how you say it. So almost everybody plays games of any sort, knows of Settlers of Catan. And we played that so, so, so many days. And that was kind of one of our first games as we started getting into um, more fun and harder games. So this one, though, is a kid's version, and I really like this. And this is a great one for my kids to play together, even if I can't play. So even though my 10-year-old can play regular Catan, she can't play it with the 8-year-old. Although the 8-year-old could probably play Catan with us if it was just her. But this one they can play without an adult. And so it has a board. What I like about this one is it has a marketplace. So instead of trying to trade with each other, which often in our family can end up with one kid annoyed at another, and I'll trade with that kid, but I won't trade with this kid, and then it turns into this thing, you know. This has a marketplace, and so you can trade one for one anytime you want with the marketplace, well, one time per turn. And then it has a whole pile of the resources. So you actually have little cardboard chip resources. <laughs> I'm dropping them everywhere. So you have little cardboard chip resources. And there's a whole pile, and you can trade two for one from that pile as many times as you want. And you are trying to build boats, layers, and or buy cocoa tiles. And cocoa tiles allow you to either move the robber or they allow you to put out more boats, layers, get resources, things like that. So this is a fun game, fairly short. My six-year-old is getting pretty good at playing it. If we played it a little more often, he'd probably be a little better at it. But. So my six, my eight and 10 year old can easily play this by themselves. Again, it's a game I enjoy playing with them. It's fun together and nice pieces. Yeah, so a very good version that is not as long and drawn out as Catan. And you also don't get the issue of trading because that's an issue. Maybe it's only in my house. Ticket to Ride, My First Journey. So this is a really fun version of Ticket to Ride. If you've played that where you're trying to build your trains across, well, the country or Europe or whatever. So my six-year-old can definitely play this one. And so it has a board that is a map of the United States. What is really cool about this is that for each my hair got done, my chair, um, for each city, sorry, <laughs> for each city, there's a picture. So if you have, you can have non-readers playing this because there's a picture and then on the ticket cards, it also has those pictures. So when they're trying to figure out their route, there's pictures to help them. And they don't have to try to read the words. So that's really great so that, you, you know, non-readers can play. And it's the same kind of mechanism where you take cards and then you, you either take cards or place cards on your turn and you build your routes. And this is a little different because I think it's whoever gets to um, game ends if you place your last train on the board or you complete six tickets. And it's a good logic thinker for kids because they have to start thinking about well, I can't go this way. How else can I go? And sometimes we have to help the kids. They're like, I can't get there. There's no way to get there. And it's like, well, hold on. You already have this part. Now, what if you just did this? And then it'll take you there. And so to start to help them see other ways of building their routes. We find games to be an excellent way to start helping our kids think outside the box and really develop some of those logic and thinking skills that I think are really important for kids. And games really can help them start thinking outside the box and thinking of different ways to view a situation and problem solve. How can I, ugh, this isn't working. What can I do different? I also really like that a lot of these games are short enough that we can play twice. So there's nothing more frustrating than losing a game and then not being able to play a game again for a week or whatever, depending on your, you know, what's going on in life. But this, 
these games are short enough that a lot of times you can play twice. So I know for me, I get frustrated if I lose. It's like I'm always losing. I'm always losing because we're not getting the game out very much. But if we can play the same game twice, then maybe you can try a different strategy or you can learn from what you did wrong the first time and try something different the second time. So that's really fun. Now, this last one is great for all ages, in my opinion. I enjoy this. I would totally play this game with adults. And we have played this with our kids, too. And we've our six-year-old, it says eight plus, but we've played this with our six-year-old, and he did great playing it. It says about 20 minutes. But this also goes up to eight players. So this is the this is Sushi Go Party. This is the party version, and there's a regular version that doesn't have nearly the variety of cards. So either one actually works. But the party one's really nice because it goes up to eight players. So if you're like us and you have a whole bunch of people in your house, we have eight kids, this is nice because a big group of them can play together, like a bunch of you can play. And it doesn't add a lot of time because you're all playing at the same time. So this is a card drafting game. So you have a deck of cards. You're going to pick one card. Then you're going to put your cards down and pass them to the player on your left or the player on your right. But you're going to pass them to the next player. They're going to take your deck of cards, pick a card, pass it around. So that same deck keeps getting passed around the table. So you get different. You don't know what cards you're going to have available to choose. And you're going to play your cards. And this one that comes with this little fun board. You always have the Nigeri, which they're just worth whatever points, one, two, or three. Then you have rolls, specials, and appetizers, and a dessert. And... They just, the different cards do different things. So, for instance, the tempura here, if you have two tempura, you get five points. But if you only have one, you get nothing. So, partway through the game, you might be like, or through the rounds, you play three rounds. You might be like, I, do I take a tempura and hope I get another one? Do I not take one because I don't know if I'll get any more? You just never know. Sashimi is kind of the same way. If you get three, they're worth ten points. But if you only have one, they're worth nothing. Miso soup is fun. You get points. You get three points for it. But if anybody else plays it the same round as you, no, nobody gets points for it. So that was my little six-year-old was having a really great time dropping the cards. So he was having a really great time always picking the miso soup if there was one, which became kind of funny because then the rest of us didn't really want to pick the miso soup because we're like, if it's there, he's going to pick it. And so he actually got a lot of points off that. Dumplings, you get a different number of points based on how many you have. So that's kind of, the cards are all different that way. And what's fun about this game is you don't play with all of the cards that are in here. You switch them up and you pick some different appetizers and some, and there's a little deck to help you pick. So you get a lot of variety based on mixing and matching the different pieces together. And so that makes it a unique and different game each time. Although there is like a set, like a list in there of the ones that you can play that are like best for first players or whatever. So this game is really fun. I enjoy this game a lot. Like I said, I would totally play this game with just adults. I don't know that my kids have gotten it out to play by themselves. I think they did. I think they did at least once. So this is a great game that, and like I said, it's really fun because you can play with a huge group of people. So I hope that's helpful to show you just some games that we enjoy in our family in the long winter months when you, like, we live in Nebraska. We can sometimes have snow on the ground from November till May. We don't this year. We got our first snow not long ago, but we'll see. It's still out there. I grew up just a little bit south of here, and our snow melted right away usually. Not so much here. It just stays. So we can have some long winter months where it's kind of hard to get outside, and we love to play games as a family. You know, it's dark at five o'clock at night and we can pull out some games play them these are fairly quick we also use them during school time I use them as a way to have my kids play with each other during school time so you know sometimes it's the six-year-old really needs somebody to do something with him so hey you older kid you're gonna play a game with this younger kid and everybody can enjoy that and it helps build that relationship and it keeps them both happy and happy and occupied and so we do use these games a lot for those kinds of things. And we enjoy sitting and playing the games with the kids. So I hope this gives you some ideas. If you have any questions about how anything's played or have any other suggestions or ideas, let me know. I'd love to hear what your guys' family, favorite family games are. You can see 
in the background we have these are a lot of our you can't see all of them these are a lot of our kids games and then we have shelves and shelves downstairs of um older games really and then a whole bunch of educational games which i'm going to try to share with you guys soon so hope you have a great day thanks for joining us today please leave a comment if you have something else you'd like me to talk about or you have any questions please hit the like button and subscribe to see more videos about what we do